we are very excited to have Langa Bonambi with us today. Uh, my name is Heinrich Titus, for those of you guys that may be tuning in for the, for the first time. And uh, of course, Langa is a, is a singer-songwriter and is a pastor living in Johannesburg, in Josie, the city of grace, the city of gold. And Langa is a, is a pastor at, uh, at Every Nation. And um, I think uh, you guys are Mulder's Drift, eh, Langa? Uh, yes, yes, we are currently based in Mulder's Drift. Awesome, awesome. And uh, amongst other things... Um, for those who don't know, that's Kruger's Dorp side, kind of between Kruger's Dorp. Yeah. So that's, that's the area we're in. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Um, I, I've, I've had a couple of weddings there uh, and it's quite a, it's quite a gem. Yep. Yeah. That's, this is married. You, so I'm not surprised yet. You, you haven't, you've done a few weddings this side. Yeah. Um, so amongst other things also, eh, being, besides being a pastor, Langa is also the founder and the creative director of a clothing label called the uh, Sinqua Setu, which I think means uh, daily bread or living bread, Langa? Uh, it means our bread, but it comes from uh, daily bread in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, yeah. yeah so come on. The, yes. Give us our daily bread. Yeah. So that's. Okay, give us our daily bread. And um, so that's a clothing, clothing range, sort of um, a cultural engagement dream that, that, you've, that you've launched uh, along. And of course, you're involved also uh, in the, the gospel music industry. I started the uh, We Will Worship. Um, I think it's nothing less than a, a gospel music uh, movement in our, in our country, as well as the Tomorrow Culture Foundation. So you've got a whole lot of different balls that you're juggling, a whole lot of different uh, passions that's, uh, that's running through your, through your blood. Now, of course, first and foremost, you, I, I know you're a family man and you're married uh, to an arty. You guys have got four, four beautiful uh, kids as well. Maybe let's start there, man, before we get into the church stuff and into the, the, the clothing and the music. Uh, tell me a little bit more about... Uh, just Langa and Bonati and, and the kids. Uh, are you born and bred Johannesburgers? Is that where where you saw the light of day? Is that where you guys <laughs> fell in love with the whole thing? Just uh, got uh, got launched there, or what's your? This is a family. Is Bongi related to you? Sorry, I just have to ask this question. Is Bongi the Springbok rugby player? Is he related to you? Uh, <laughs> he he is. He is not. He is related to me. I'm, I'm distant cousin. Uh, how, however, I must say, uh, having a Springbok with your surname is the most awesome thing because all of a sudden now people can pronounce my surname. Just quickly, man, tell me a bit more about the Bonambi family. Yeah, so we've been married for 13 years now. We've got uh, four kids. It's two girls, two boys. Eldest is, well, they'll all be 11, 9, 7, and 5, I think, by the end of the year. Um, uh, two girls, two boys. Uh, we've uh, kind of, I guess, in our South African context, a bit alternative lifestyle because we homeschool. Uh, people think. I know for other people it's normal, but it's not a common thing on this side of the world. And uh, as I said, we recently moved out to Mulder's Drift. So we live out on a farm. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't farm anything. We don't farm anything. We just live on a farm. <laughs> on, on a farm. And, uh, and it, the desire was really to, to, to live a bit of a slower life. Uh, and uh, to give ourselves the best chance to live values as a, as a family. And uh, so that's why we're out here. And so that's us. Uh, uh, my wife is the school principal here at home as the, as the, 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 the leader of the homeschool squad. Uh, she's also a photographer. And, um, and so we both run various businesses, small businesses on our own. Um, so it's uh, quite a, an eventful life that we, that we lead at the moment. Yeah. 
sounds sounds like it, my man. But I think obviously um, being involved with you know all the many different um, facets of life, ministry life, and fashion and music. Um, I suppose it does help that you have that flexibility in terms of uh, the homeschooling as well, and, and have that stable base at home from which you can you, you can work. So, so I'm I'm very intrigued, you know, just to to, to hear that you guys have decided to make some radical changes, moving where you've moved to, and obviously the lifestyle that you guys are intentional about um, living. So, Langa, it, it it sounds to me like like you've had to make a couple of decisions eh, around how you wanted to just fulfill your calling, your your purpose, your destiny. How, how, did, how did your journey with the Lord sort of um, develop from, I suppose, uh, I don't know if you had to encounter with Christ, that adversity and wrestling with what does it mean to be a believer in South Africa. And now you're living in the Bundus, man. You've got this family. Your kids are beautifully spaced out two years, two towns, two boys, two girls. It's brilliant planning that you've got going there. Uh, so many different things. Um, uh, you know, was it sort of, did you sort of just almost stumble into that or did you have to be very intentional around, this is what I want to do with my life and this is how it's going to look within the South African context. What's your, your journey been like just in terms of being a believer, you know, within a very particular context and culture? Um, yeah, look, I, I think, uh, uh, for, for me, in terms of my, my belief, I mean, I'd, I'd grown up in, in the Christian home, uh, the kind of home where you had to go to church on Sunday, regardless of where you were on, on Saturday. Uh, but yeah. where thing really changed for me was when I, I was going to a discipleship relationship when I was in university. And, uh, and that really changed everything for me. I had uh, someone uh, walk with me, encourage me, and just uh, raise me up in the faith. And, uh, and the key part of, of um, the, the Every Nation culture was, was uh, discipleship and lordship was one of the, the values. And uh, was, you know, mm-hmm. having Christ be Lord over your life. And so when, when that was instilled in me, uh, you know, decided to, to make every decision based on that, on, you know, what scripture says or, or what the Lord wants us as his disciples. And, uh, and, uh, and as you know, you know, you grow as a disciple, you grow and you understand what that is and what that looks like. And uh, I'm yeah. grateful, you know, to, to have a wife also that, shares that same value of like, Hey, love, whatever, you know, the Lord wants will go in that direction. And, uh, and so, so I think being um, a young, you know, back then being a younger couple in Johannesburg, um, just for that a lot of people made excuses for not living a Christ centered life. Uh, and they, you know, a, a lot of the excuses had to do with busyness and the demands of life and the Joburg life and the busyness of it. And uh, whether people can't study one Bible the way that they would like to, because they're busy or they won't spend, they can't spend enough time with their kids because of busyness or whatever it is that they feel like they, they needed to do would find that just this consistent narrative of busyness. And, uh, and wherever you ask people, whenever you ask people, hey, what are your values? And people would say, or well, order of priorities. And people would always say God, uh, family, and then work. But along the way, you'd find that work would come first. And, uh, and so we just decided, man, we were going to mm. stubbornly uh, put God first, put family first, and then, and then career and work and, and whatever else that we'd have on our plates. And so... Uh, but we just we just realized we had to fight for that. We it, it's you know the world is not easy for us to live according to those values. Joburg itself as a city uh, is not set up for people to live according to those values. But we feel like God has called us to be in Job, and so we would find a way first, first, um, even if it means earning less, even if it means living further out even if it uh, means making some hard choices 
life and career wise. And, um, and so that's, that's how we've kind of ended up where we are. Uh, it was just, Hey, as a family, as the Mbonambi family, uh, how do we create a culture that puts God first? Um, and the, you know, as, as, as number one and, uh, and help us raise our kids in that way. So they also yeah. live with that understanding and that's modeled to them, uh, that, Hey, God needs to come first and the things of God need to come first, um, in, in everything that we do. Yeah. So that's us. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, it's amazing, man. I think one of the things that has always encouraged me over the years about, <clears throat> about every nation and, and, and just even the relationship that has developed with, with Shofar was to just to uh, see how passionately committed, you know, we, we both are about discipleship and, and then we take that, that seriously as a mandate that the Lord had, had given us to not just to be disciples, but also to, to make disciples. And, uh, you know, over the years, watching, watching every nation just um, grow and just being faithful, you know, to that, even though there's also been changes over the years within your church family that you've just, you guys have just been hammering away at that, you know, about, about discipleship and the Lordship of Jesus. And, yeah, we're just so thankful for every nation, you yeah, know, just the testament and the witness that your church family has, and uh, not just in South Africa, but uh, but globally as well. And, and I think, you know, what, what I'm excited about, about Convergence and a guy like you coming is, is, is that we can unpack that a little bit, you know, because it sounds like you say, you know, there's a cost um, that, that might look different, you know, for us then to our brothers in Syria and our sisters, you know, in Pakistan, it might look different. Um, but there's still a very real cost involved for, yeah. for us here in South Africa. It's how are we going to be disciples here in, in our culture, you know? That's right. No, a hundred, a hundred percent. Um, yeah, it, I mean, everything. And I think that's, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, you, you appreciate about, about scripture is that, you know, Jesus draws the crowd. But then he, he tells them the cost of, of following him. And, uh, and then the crowd thins out. And, uh, and it's one of those things I think in, in generally in Christian culture, we could do better at yeah. is actually presenting the cost um, to people. Uh, I, I think we do well at drawing the crowds. Uh, we do well at, yeah, wooing them in. But, but we, I think we tend to try to keep the crowds uh, but you know, Jesus gives them the cost of following him. And uh, so that people know what they're getting into. And, uh, and I mean, the reality is mm -hmm. you, you can't fully know what, what the cost can be, but at least you can posture your heart, um, to be willing to, 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 to count, to bear whatever cost may come your way. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it definitely does come at a cost, but I, 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 I think generally when people pay a high cost from following Jesus, we, we elevate those people and we say, wow, so-and-so gave up so much or so -and -so, oh, it's cost so-and-so this much to follow Jesus. And we make it like it's, um, they've done something exceptional. But, but this is the daily life of a believer, of a follower of Jesus is that we, we should all be willing to count the cost, whatever that looks like, um, and, and not make those that are paying a price seem like they are super disciples and, and everyone else is kind of like a disciple light. But there should only be kind of one standard of discipleship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm intrigued, brother. At the one hand, you you obviously, you know, there's some some decisions you have made concerning your values, your family, etc., et your walk with Christ. And and yet, even though you're physically living out in the sticks a little bit, um, I mean you're still very much the forefront of of cultural engagement. Um, you know, uh, I think 
thinking about the clothing range that, that you guys uh, uh, you know have and 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 the music scene and and uh, um, you know uh, I'm I'm just curious you know how did you find or how are you finding maybe maybe the tension between um, the cost of following Christ as a disciple wanting to live a holy life wanting to be countercultural you know in in in, in so many different ways and and yet still being sought, you know, still still engaging in a very real way. Um, maybe, you know, just I know that there's so many guys who love Jesus, want to live holy lives, and you always have to school, you know, between that and understanding. But, you know, I've also got to be in culture and make and make a difference. And and um, I mean, you, you, you've just gone for it. You just you just step into that space and and again, was that something that you consciously had to decide to do, or was it sort of something that grew grew on you as you as you just followed Jesus step by step? Um, yeah. So so again, I think a, a, a lot of our thinking just comes from what we see in Scripture, and um, and so so a I mean a, a reason a big reason why we kind of moved out again was just to be able to live according to the values. Uh, that we feel we should espouse to. Um, and so one, one of the things that really early on in our marriage was just the realization that, that uh, our primary responsibility as parents is to disciple our kids. Uh, I mean, I could go out there discipling people left and right, you know, in the church, through the church and stuff. But if at home I'm doing that, then I've, I've, missed, I've missed the mark. Um, so firstly was, yeah. you know, the thought around, okay, when we start having, you know, family or, you know, how can we best disciple them? Because that's how that becomes kind of our primary responsibility. Um, and so for people, it's easy for them to do it in the middle of the city and whatnot. Um, but for us, I, I think we just found it really challenging uh, where we were and things like that. And, and I guess trusted God for a bit more space. Uh, I, I'm originally from Durban. I'm a boy, love the beach. I love nature. I love, you know, all that stuff. And I struggled with that. Uh, there's very little kind of natural beauty uh, in Johannesburg. We're not, we're not spoiled like you guys out in Stellenbosch and in the, in the, in the Western Cape. Um, and so anything for me that helps with that is just seeing, seeing more trees, uh, seeing more nature, breathing fresher air, that all just helps even in my journey with, with the Lord. And, uh, and so I guess part of that decision was again, just how can this help us live Christ-centered lives? Uh, and I guess we're privileged to be able to live in a place like this. Some other people don't have that option. Um, yeah. uh, but, but nonetheless, it, it, uh, we're very much within community. So we, we believe everything around building strong community. Um, and it's one of the things I've really appreciated about Shofar as well as whenever I've interacted with Shofar people, there's just a strong sense of, of community. So it's not just, Hey, let's go out and make disciples, but there's a strong, uh, pull in a sense to actually also connecting and loving one another as well. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So in terms of uh, cultural engagement, we, we're everywhere, you know, we're everywhere. We, we trusted God for the longest time. I, I, I worked in the church, uh, for every nation and just in every nation. And, uh, and so to some stage, I was just always surrounded Christians. If I was having coffee, it was with Christians, counseling Christians, everywhere was Christians. And so we, we were just uh, really challenged to think around how we can minister in other spaces and, you know, be a part of the culture, of what's happening in the city. And, uh, and so through our small businesses, we've been able to interact with people uh, in disarming ways, uh, where people know me as Langa, Langa the designer, or Langa the musician, not Langa as as the pastor guy. And uh, 
And so that's been really, really great and created, uh, you know, natural ways where we can share the gospel with people and interact with people, um, whether, you know, it's dealing with designers or at a clothing or fabric shop that I frequent. Um, uh, yeah, or studios, different, having writing sessions with other musicians that are mainstream musicians. Um, so all these platforms, uh, and again, so that we can mm. take the gospel out um, into mm. the spaces. And it's not about, you know, I think for, for me, we've learned, or for us, we've learned that it's not about standing on a soapbox in the middle of the street and proclaiming the gospel. Uh, but, you know, I know some people are called to do that, but it's, you know, it's where God places and plants us. What are the natural spaces that we're in? Uh, where can, you know, how can mm-hmm. we hear the gospel in those, in those spaces? And so, so, yeah, so that's how we design our lives uh, so that we can have the opportunities and mm-hmm. moments to actually just be salt and light uh, in these different spaces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, so, you know, I, I would think then that for you, just influencing culture, being being salt and light, babe, is very much part of what you see as as the calling of the normal, you know, average Christian Christian life. Um, have there been some stumbling blocks just that, that you had to navigate through? Maybe some perspectives from, from your own side or from the guys. Let's say, for instance, you're working with mainstream um, artists and you're collaborating on a song or you're working with uh, I don't know whether you would use you know all your designers or the guys that make the clothes are they all believers or, or are you sort of like engaging with different different people from different viewpoints and and, and maybe just talk us through that longer if there been some stumbling blocks you know some mind shifts maybe f- from your own perspective or fellow believers maybe or maybe even from the the guys who aren't uh, uh, following Christ yet, and you found that hey, I'm meeting a certain perception here that they think all believers, all Christians are like this or like that. Maybe just um, one or two, you know, to encourage some folk out there that are thinking of of uh, also being more intentional in engaging. Mm. Yeah. So one of the uh, um, one of the things for was at some stage we looked at our lives and we saw that our time was just spent with church people, with people that already knew the Lord. And, uh, and yet we were given this mandate to go out and make disciples. And, uh, and so because of that, we decided to be intentional about restructuring our lives so that it incorporates people that don't know the Lord. Um, and so that we're intentional about being naturally being in spaces uh, where people don't know the Lord. Um, and so just simple things mm. like like um, we started a soccer, a soccer team. You know, there are there's almost every day of the week. There's some sort of league, some su- uh, football league that's going on a five aside. It's, uh, it's quite popular this side of the world. And uh, so we started a team, you know, so that we could do something that we loved, but also share Share. about the one that we love, Uh, you know. And so that became a a, a Mm. quite a fun thing, even for the the guys in our community Mm. um, in a natural way to to just, you know, to to share the gospel. And again, like we, we we're in a city where everyone is just busy, 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 busy. And so you talk about you know, speak, uh, preaching the gospel or sharing the gospel with people. And, and there's like, where do I find time? You know, where do I find time to do this? I'm at work and then I'm at, you know, I've got to be with family and, you know, things like that. So we're looking at natural ways that, you know, people, people are, you know, doing their hobbies or whatever it is um, where they can have gospel conversations. Uh, so one of the, the, the challenges I think that we, that I found also sometimes was interacting with people and never actually sharing my faith with them, uh, befriending people and never actually sharing my faith with them and, uh, and realize that, you know, there was that, that sense of, Hey, when you built a friendship, you don't want to mess that friendship up by sharing your faith. Um, but 
but you know if, if we never share our faith how will people uh know uh how will people hear mm. um how can people come to faith uh you know so it's our role to 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 share to to share our faith at, at least and i know for some people it can be challenging the easy part can be getting into the the relationship uh, and the hard mm. part can be sharing about uh you know the the sharing having those gospel conversations and so those are some of the stumbling blocks mm-hmm. i think that we've encountered along the way um mm-hmm. and then uh but it's but it've always just been surprised you know like when we've actually shared our faith how many people have come forth and said man you know i used to be a christian or i've heard about this or i uh and then it just creates these opportunities for you to journey and begin begin a discipleship relationship with people uh but unless people know um i guess where you stand and what you believe you know um they can never ask the questions uh and you can never yeah. i guess begin that journey with them if i could put it that way yeah 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 no that's a that's a beautiful um thanks for that my brother um Uh, and just for our listeners, one of the reasons why we we're just extremely excited to have Langa um, share some of his life with us and and what God has been doing in and through him at Convergence is that obviously there's been a relationship that's been been building between uh, some of our worship guys, James uh, Pringle, and uh, quite a few of the other chauffeur band guys, together with Langa and Stella and some of the other guys, and just an old beautiful collaborative worship scene that's that's happening in in South Africa now and and so Langa is going to be a part of uh, leading worship for us at uh, at Convergence and, and also just sharing with us around um how can we within our cultural context uh, follow Christ and, and I love what you said not just to to do what you what you love but but also to talk of the one uh whom you love um I think that's such a powerful powerful um uh a motivation to have in your in your heart and and like so, so the worship component i think it's been 10 years uh, um that uh, we will worship um has been has been going and and that's a long time eh? i i think the last two years or so the worship scene just with lockdown everything obviously god did a major reset uh, i think you guys have launched what is it three three albums already at least that you guys have released um probably more Than the than those than those three, but I know you know there's been many many awards uh, in the Christian uh, gospel music scene in South Africa, and 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 that your music has been credited with really influencing a lot of the the gospel music trends in in South Africa. And, um, you know, never getting through that space, my brother. The holiness of God, the call of God, um, the call it the fame, the the uh, being well known. You know. Just the music scene. At times, we know how um, you know how sad uh, 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 the last couple of years have been in, in, in some cases with regards to our worship leaders and and people that have really been influential and have sort of uh, fallen by the wayside. And, and sometimes people can get a little bit um, you know skeptical about about the worship scene and. Um, maybe just something you can encourage us with, you know, about uh, what's happening in or what what are you seeing? What are you seeing in South Africa? Uh, what is the Lord? What is the Lord doing? Uh, we're looking forward to experiencing that with you at, at Convergence. But to some of the shifts and the, and the stuff that you've seen happening over the last few years in, in your journey as well. I know it's a mouthful, a lot of questions all in one, <laughs> but uh, you can you can answer anyone that you. <laughs> Yeah, and we probably need uh, a lot longer than just a podcast for that. But um, you can you can start anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so about within our South African uh, landscape, uh, music or, or worship wise, is is there are more more churches and more communities writing songs, um, and that's one of the things I'm I'm really passionate about is is seeing more people or more communities telling the story of what God has is doing has promised to do within their community um i think the the challenge with the global kind of worship uh movement or or trends is that we now have you know christian rock stars um and and because of the global world that we live in 
you know, if something rises to the top of the charts, then it influences what happens in many churches across the world. And uh, whereas it's one person, it's one author that's writing in a particular context, but their song becomes, you know, uh, what influences us in a whole nother context. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, however, it, it, it becomes problematic when their song becomes louder than our song and their story uh, supplants our story. Um, and, uh, and so that's why I, I'm an advocate for local churches writing their own songs and singing their own stories because something unique within specific communities. Um, mm-hmm. I'm part of the Every Nation community. Uh, God is doing something, you know, specific, specific and general. Um, you know, so there's songs that we can write very general that anyone anywhere can sing, but there's songs that are also very specific to our context. Mm. And, uh, and so I think it, it's over the last while, the general songs have dominated our, our song lists. But now more and more, I think the specific songs start to uh, populate our, our song lists. Um, because, you know, when you come mm. from that particular context, you can, you can more accurately tell the story of what's happening in that context. Mm. And, uh, and so I'm very excited by that, uh, seeing more and more communities writing their own songs. And the, the challenge, though, with songwriting, because, again, we're in this global context, is that songwriters historically have written songs to try to appeal to the global market. Um, and so the songs have been very general, but now as we've raised songwriters, in-house songwriters, uh, we're seeing more and more homegrown songs, grown stories, uh, being sung. And I think that that becomes a better reflection of what God is doing in song or through song or sung mm-hmm. worship, uh, across the, across the nation. So so that's one thing I'm, I'm really excited about and something, as I said, I'm an advocate for. And so it's one of the things that, that I do is I, I churches with songwriting, uh, how to kickstart basically a, 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 a in-house writing culture. Uh, whether you are a song, whether you feel you're a songwriter or not, um, uh, you know, I, I think there's songwriting is a lot simpler than what people make it uh, out to be. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I think, I think um, the more we can have that, that the, the fewer kind of Christian rock stars we'll have because mm-hmm. we'll, we'll start to celebrate our own, uh, our own more uh, as opposed to looking to, uh, you know, whoever's charting, mm-hmm. uh, whoever's the, you know, the newest, the most popular uh, mm. Christian songwriter or, or artist. Yeah. Mm. 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 No, that's awesome. I like that. So the, at the end of the day, you know, we can leave space for, for the only one who's the rock and the, the bright morning star that uh, he'll be the only one in our midst that gets that, uh, the kind of glory and adulation. Um, I want to thank you as well for the inspiration longer that you are to many of our songwriters as well. And, and just the guys you are collaborating with, I know the uh, chauffeur band guys, uh, James and them had an amazing weekend just now in France, with, uh, just together. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I shared with James early on in the year, is we were just thinking and praying about convergencies that are globally, but, you know, specifically for us as pastors and, and uh, musicians, those occupying the, the stage. It's a higher call to holiness um, than you know I've ever sensed before, and I and I feel that that's also something beautifully that's coming through. Uh, with this deep purification that God is bringing to His church together with a shaking. Um, and again, man, I think you know just we just want to commend you and honor you and thank you as well for staying the course. You know mm. we uh, we need people to finish well, and I think part of that is being rooted in local community. Uh, where uh, there are people who can can keep you accountable and and um, 
see me on the, the stage and then all this stuff that many other people would get, get excited about and, and call us out in accountability. When and, uh, attitudes yeah. think and, you know, when we, uh, we like you say. We yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. And I uh, just want to give a shout out to, to you guys. Uh, because I, I have had, uh, uh, you know, been growing in relationship with uh, some of the guys in uh, Shofar and, um, and just how, how you guys have invested in your musicians and your songwriters. Um, it, it really is something special. It's, uh, you know, maybe for you guys it's commonplace, but as, as one that gets to kind of travel across the, the country in different spaces, it, it is rare. You know, it is rare and especially for for churches to get behind these guys and, uh, you know, to encourage them. Uh, one, of, one of the challenges, I think, with the church space is that, well, particularly for, for leaders or pastors, is everyone wants amazing worship experiences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, everyone does, but not everyone is willing to invest in their people that serve in that particular ministry. And, um, and, uh, and so it's, it's so encouraging to see you guys investing in them, investing resources, time, um, so, that, so that you can sing shofar songs. Um, you know, the, the challenge is that people write songs, but it's, writing songs is, is the first step. I think the, the hardest step is actually singing the songs. Yeah. In your, in your churches mm. and, uh, and choosing to trust your songs uh, before you take on kind of what the latest, most popular song is, yeah. uh, you know, because you know those songs will work because it's working in churches, you know? Um, and so often people will just choose rather to take the songs yeah. that are popular, that are charged on yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and, uh, and, and, and rather that than risk singing hmm. a new song hmm. and a new unknown song, even though it's, you know, it's, it's a homegrown song. So I've, I've just seen how you guys have really, really, you know, backed your guys. And, uh, and as a songwriter who's both worked, served as a worship leader and also as a pastor, man, you know, your biggest cheerleaders are your, are your pastors, are those guys that are like, hey, listen, go for it. You know, sing that song. It might be rough, maybe the first two Sundays. <laughs> but, uh, but to keep, you know, to keep, to keep at it. Yeah. Keep trusting your song and trusting mm -hmm. your songs and trusting. And the more you have that, you know, the better the songs get. Um, yeah. You know. Really appreciate your time, Lang. I know, I know you're a busy man. So I appreciate you taking the time out to, to just spend a couple of minutes with us and, and share some more of your heart. And just all of our listeners and our, and our, and our, uh, our viewers out there, please remember Diarise 14th to the 16th of October. We'll have a venue down here in the Western Cape as well, up in Pretoria. Um, and uh, we'll be sharing some more info with you. But if you have any questions, please go to our, our website, www.showforonline.org forward slash Convergence. You'll see all the info on the speakers there, as well as um, where you can donate. Uh, our heart to get this uh, this convergence as accessible and as affordable as possible. So please consider just donating and helping us to get as many people as possible there. We don't want finance to stand away for anybody coming to receive a blessing. Alanga, thank you so much, my brother, for for your heart, and uh, now thank you for your time and the investment. And I know that you are also praying for us church family we really really appreciate that um, so thanks a lot my brother yes thanks thanks for having me so looking forward to being with you in october <laughs>